Hi, everyone. I'm your host, Charlene Shirk, and welcome to Digital Champions, where we speak to some of the most innovative thinkers in the digital space. And joining us today from Brooklyn, New York, is Nima Gardita with Pear Mill. Nima, thank you so much for joining us today on Digital Champions. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. So talk to us what you're doing over there at Pear Mill, and it seems like there's got to be some backstory to that name. Absolutely. You know, we, we've been in the advertising, digital advertising world for about three years or so, but the name comes from the 1800s. You know, Pear Mill is based on two words, Pear and Mill. Pear is from this company's name is Pear Soap that built the first set of advertisements in a magazine. And they used an art piece from a, an artist whose name was John Milias. So we put the, the two together to name our company. Uh, and our work is, although in digital, uh, we we wanted to sort of put an homage to, to the history of the industry. I love that. So talk to me about what you're doing over there. When you say your space is digital, what, are, is there an area, a niche? Everybody always says, you know, the riches are in the niches. So what's your focus? Mm -hmm. Yeah, our, our niche in the market is essentially uh, what we call hyper growth companies that are spending on paid social and paid search channels. Uh, we, we work with bringing technology and art together. So we have full creative uh, team in-house where we produce and do our own shoots and, and create our own ads. But we also have an engineering team where we uh, sort of bring together algorithmic buys and uh, and bring together uh, machine learning to try to see if we can find pockets of people within the networks that are cheaper or, or higher quality for the brands that we work with. And, and on average, our clients are sort of scaling somewhere between 10 to 20% month over month. Uh, and we spend triple digit millions per month right now. Oh, sorry, triple oh, digit wow. millions per year. Per month would be a lot more. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about what, what is, can you give me an idea of what your typical client is and what's the problem that they're coming to you to solve? For sure. You know, I think we excel uh, within clients that we call either marketplaces or managed marketplaces. So let's say one of our clients is named khealth.com and they help uh, patients get prescriptions uh, for acute issues immediately. And so what happens there is they have these supply and demand dynamic problems where they have so many doctors in each state that it can actually do prescriptions. So what we do is we figure out, okay, how can we spend the budget in the most efficient way where when the user clicks on an ad, they can actually be serviced immediately. Uh, and this is obviously on the search side because there's a lot of high intent. On the social side, we have very similar problems where if you have uh, geographical limitations with your supply or uh, different pools of, of parts of your marketplace, we're going to have to figure out how can we make sure that the user experience when someone clicks on an ad is perfect. You can go in there and, and, and get the service that you're, you're, you're trying to get. Um, so these are actually quite complex problems. And uh, we have to bring in machine learning and clustering and all these sort of stuff in place to figure out, okay, where should the next dollar go um, as we're advertising today to make sure that the user experience for the customer is is um, sort of efficient. Does that, does that sort of give and you a that, sense of how we, we do the work? Yeah, and efficiency, you know, so much to do with efficiency is reading the analytics and being able to determine who the audience is and where the audience is, to your point. And on your website, I got to ask, it says, it's about analysis and alpacas. So explain that to us. <laughs> Uh, you know, the alpacas part is quite funny because we essentially every time you join, anyone joins our company, we design a unique alpaca for them. Uh, <laughs> mine has like a disco ball on its head. Um, we have one who, who has like crazy hair because one of our uh, partners is, is has like a massive afro and it matches them. So the alpaca part is sort of part of the culture. <laughs> um, and I don't really know where it came from. I think it was like uh, one of our designers thought it was funny to design one of our personal ads for our own work. Um, as, a, as an alpaca that stood out in the middle of a lot of alpacas because they had this like red color uh, and that sort of uh, gone through. And on the analytics side, you know, we, we essentially partner with internally with our uh, data engineers um, to make sure that our creative folks understand what's working, what's not working, so they can use that information to uh, optimize the ads as they, as they go along and, and as they launch new campaigns. So there's like a sort of very strong feedback loop built into our process on when we produce something, is it working? Is it not working? So we can bring uh, that knowledge together and produce the right, right work as we go forward. And one thing about digital marketing is that it is always evolving, you know, the tools you can use, the analytics that you read. So what are some of the things that you and your team of alpacas are looking at over the next year to two years that you think people should have their eye on? 
Yeah, I think we have this general philosophy that the industry is moving moving towards like the old age of creativity, where creative is becoming a lot more important than before. With the combination of data and the data you feed into these networks like Facebook and Google, etc., becomes very important. So the tools that we use are essentially tools that are around attribution. So Rockerbox, Attribution App, and all these sort of companies that are caring about attribution. On the creative side, we have our own our own tooling, but there's companies that are trying to help you produce creative faster, right? So can you bring these two disciplines together in a way that um, makes it so you're, you're deploying your budgets effectively? That's kind of what the future of the industry is going to look like. In a lot of ways, it's, it's almost what it was like in the 70s, um, but a lot more sophisticated and um, more nuanced than before. And Nima, before we let you go, we always like to ask, you know, what is the best tip that you can give our viewers that they could implement tomorrow to improve their business? I think the most important thing is having a very strong experimentation process. Uh, run ideas as, as hypotheses that you have. Make sure that you understand what success looks like and go through that process over and over again so you understand what types of creative, what types of targeting work for your business and, and build on those learnings over time to excel. All right. Well, Nima Gardita, thank you so much for joining us. And if you'd like to learn more about what he's doing over there at Pear Mill, you can check them out at dailyadbrief.com. Thank you so much again for joining us. I'm your host, Charlene Shirk. That's going to do it for us today on Digital Champions. And we look forward to learning something new with you next time. Simplify presents Addressable CTV, combining the power of TV with the targeting and attribution of digital. Simplify's Addressable CTV delivers massive reach with the ability to scale without sacrificing precision. TV buyers can generate incremental reach with household level targeting, frequency controls, reporting, and insights. To learn more about Simplify's Addressable CTV and what it can do for your clients, visit simply.fi.